Now I want to talk about a couple of techniques to connect Pandas or Jupyter Notebooks to SQL. So there's two basic approaches. The first one is to realize that a Jupyter Notebook is nothing more than Python. It's an interactive Python interpreter where you kind of go through cells and you run them. And so any of the things that we've been doing in the Python programs that we've written for this class will work there. Uh, importing the Python connector, Python Postgres connector. There is a Pandas extension called ReadSQL, which will take a, um, uh, ReadSQL takes a, a database connection like we were using in Python before, and it runs an SQL command and basically brings you back a data frame. There's also uh, a magic SQL that uh, function that you can say percent and then run SQL commands. And it kind of turns a Jupyter Notebook into a simple uh, PGS, uh, PSQL uh, client. And so it's a, it just is a, is a command line client, you type commands. And if you really like uh, Jupyter Notebooks rather than command line, it's a way for you to run a command, explore it, run a command, explore it, maybe put a limit clause on it or whatever. So we'll talk about how both of these things work. Um, if, for example, you are using something like InfluxDB, it's, it's kind of a, maybe a weird database and it gives you an SQL interface and it gives you a Python library to talk to its SQL interface. Well, you're probably gonna have to use like something like straight Python because the magic function, which we'll talk about next, uses uh, SQL alchemy and you have to have a driver for each of the databases like connected the right way. So at some point you might find that if, you're, if your world's a little more complex, you want to use straight Python. And so this looks kind of like the code we were writing before. It just happens to be broke into cells. And so we're going to do an import. We do a connection string. By the way, that's, I didn't want that to be small. So that's all one long line with a database name and the user and the port and the host and um, all that stuff, and then you make your connection, and you get a connection back. Connection is your like portal, your window in, and then you can send SQL commands. I just happen to put this into a string, and then I use the pandas read SQL query, where I pass in the SQL statement and a connection string, and it just gives me back a data frame. So that's in pandas. Pandas is running the SQL command, it's looping through the result set, and giving you back a data frame. Okay, so that's the straight Python. It's pretty straightforward. I think in ultimately it'll give you the most flexibility, but it looks kind of, it looks like Python code. And uh, uh, you might think that's a good thing, or you might think that's a bad thing. I, I think it's cool. I think I like, like to be able to write little snippets in a notebook and then just go r paste those things over into a Python application and then let it run all night in ways that I know how it's going to work and how it's going to control. But if you really want to use Jupyter Notebook, you can install this uh, SQL magic function and there's a pip install for this. And so you have to get this installed into your environment. And so this is where you say load this extension, then the config, and then you basically make a database connection by typing percent SQL. And that first one sets the database connection for percent SQL from the rest of the session. Then you say percent SQL and then you type in some SQL and that will run it and it'll show it to you. Or you can say, give me back a result. And this is kind of like what we did when we were talking in Python is you get a result, you run a query and you get a result set. And then you have to work through that result set. So the result set itself is not a data frame, but the SQL magic is designed to talk to pandas. And so you can say, hey, give me back a data frame for that result, which means read through the result and give me back a data frame. And then you can just print out the data frame. So those are the two ways and we'll go through the, we'll go through some examples. This is just an outline of what we want you to talk about. Um, and so in summary, you know, SQL and pandas are good friends. Sometimes you got no choice because the data is in an SQL database. Someone else has done all the work to give you a database. Uh, Pandas is really amazing as it, in its use of memory. And if your data is like medium large, you can sort of maybe squeeze it into memory by using clever schema mechanisms, which are effectively compression, much like we think of a database schema as it's got a function of compression or reducing the amount of data scanned. But sometimes it's just so large, you can't do it. You gotta put that thing in a database. 
And then if you want, you can actually ignore terminal and command line and just run SQL commands uh, in your Jupyter Notebook and then pull that data and get it back into Pandas. So in general, talking to SQL is uh, pretty natural in Pandas and uh, the skills naturally pretty much move both ways.